The video about to see today is a video that I've already seen partly, not in its entirety, but I thought I should bring it to the channel because it's going to be a very interesting one. So during the Putin Tucker Carlson interview, Putin gave a little bit of context or um, history about the relationship or the geographical, should I say, entanglements between Ukraine and Russia. You know, Putin tried to explain that so we understand the full context. And, you know, people are debating online, saying this is wrong, that is wrong. Well, this person made a video to kind of justify or give more perspective to further explain what Putin was saying. And I think it's something that we need to see. You don't have to agree, but at least have a perspective again. Check it out. The interview with Tucker Carlson, the Russian president Vladimir Putin, started with a deep insight into the old history of Russia where he mentions Prince Rurik, who came to Novgorod and founded Russia, the monument to Millennium of Russia in Novgorod's Kremlin, Princess Olga and her grandson, Prince Vladimir, Vladimir the Baptist, who baptized Russia from paganism into Orthodox Christianity. In this video, I will show you what Putin told in that part of the interview. My name is Sergey Baklikov. This is Baklikov Live. So the physical evidence. Okay. So I now came to Novgorod myself. These days it is called Veliki Novgorod. Novgorod the Great. Don't mess it up with Nizhny Novgorod, which is located in the central Russia, 400 kilometers from Moscow. No, this is another Novgorod, original Novgorod, the city which was founded on the banks of Volkhov River, on the territory of contemporary northwestern Russia. It is located in 200 kilometers southeast from St. Petersburg and about 500 kilometers northwest from Moscow. So it's uh, in equally in between of St. Petersburg and Moscow. Closer to St. Petersburg, more distant to Moscow. Novgorod founded in 859, and that's where in 862, here by invitation came Prince Rurik and founded the state of Russia. He came here by the invitation of Slavic and the Finno Ugric tribes that lived here on this territory back in the 9th century. Such a tribes as Slovenia, Krivice, Mere, and possibly Vis. They told Tururic that we have everything here, an abundance of everything, but we just can't get along together. We need a neutral, unbiased person who will be able to manage our matters and to be completely fair. So, they addressed to Rurik and his brothers, Truvor and Seneus. They were the Varangians, the Scandinavian people, those ones who lived on the banks of Scandinavia. In fact, the neighbors. And they came here. They came here through the Baltic Sea, got to Nivar River. Nivar River led them to Lake Ladoga. And from Lake Ladoga, they got here to Volkhov River. Check out the map. That's how Prince Rurik came, settled down here in Veliki Novgorod. Meanwhile, here there begins the Novgorod run. Yes, it's 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. Hmm. Wait, they still pre preserve the walls and the history and everything. This is very, very good. And there began the Veliki Novgorod Marathon. Ariuri came here and founded the state of Russia. Veliki Novgorod Kremlin. He founded Russia and uh, turned to be the beginner of a dynasty of rulers of Russia. 
the dynasty of Rurix, which has lasted non-stop for 700 years until it was replaced with the dynasty of Romanovs, which has then existed for another 300 years, right until the day when Tsar Nicholas, Nicholas II and all of his family was killed in Yekaterinburg. Yekaterinburg, that's how we call this in English. Yekaterinburg. I now gonna enter Novgorod Kremlin. Okay. Yes, Kremlin is not only in Moscow. In fact, here in Russia. It's Kremlin kind of a, like a like a palace, another name for a palace, because I think Russia has a lot of Kremlins. Yeah, I used to think Kremlin was just in Moscow, but I've seen a video previously and there was a different Kremlin. So is it like a place, you guys call it like palace, Kremlin? Let me know. 12 of uh, full scaled, full scale preserved Kremlins. 12. I was taking you to many of them. Kazan Kremlin, Nizhny Novgorod Kremlin. Pskov Kremlin, Astrahan Kremlin. Now in Novgorod here, living 223,000 residents. How cold is it out there? <laughs> there were the days when it was the capital, the capital of old Russia. Now it's a quiet, nice provincial city. We are inside of Novgorod Kremlin and I'm going to another thing, which is Vladimir Putin mentions in the interview to Tucker Carlson. I'm talking about the monument to Millennium of Russia, and that is a very interesting monument that was set up here exactly a thousand years after the foundation of Russia in 1862. The sculptor Mikhail Shemyakin won the competition. The competitions of the projects because his project truly turned to be the best. Here it is. But before I will walk around this monument to Millennium of Russia, let me also pay your attention, get your attention to St. Sophia Cathedral. In fact, this is the oldest Orthodox Christian Church in Russia. Wow. Founded by the Order of Yaroslav the Wild. And it was preserved. Sorry, let me take it back, guys. I'm, I might talk a lot in the video because I'm surprised too. <laughs> the cathedral. In fact, this is the oldest Orthodox Christian Church in Russia. Founded by the Order of Yaroslav the Wise. Prince Yaroslav the Wise. They started the construction in 1045 and finished for five years in 1050. Hmm. Now this is a Philharmonic Hall named after Sergei Rachmaninov because one of the greatest Russian composers ever. This looks like a newer building. It's not as old. I don't think so. Sergei Rachmaninov, even though was not born in Novgorod, but he was born in Novgorod region, so not far from here. And now let's return to the monument. the monument to Millennium of Russia. It is really very interesting. Look at its construction. In the lower parts, it looks like a lower parts of the bell, because when Rurik came to Novgorod, he came by the invitation and here, he was more like a manager, but the real authority was in the hands of the people. In order to 
fix the questions, like discuss the questions, they were ringing the bell, literally were ringing the bell and all the people were coming uh, to the central square and uh, we're discussing all the questions. And Rurik was the one who was making sure everything goes fair. On the middle part, there's the sphere, or should I say the bull, which is symbolize the monarchy. The thing is... This guy's history is very good. Is he like a history student or is it an average Russian knows this history? Is it like a thing Russians know? Because I, I noticed in my comment section, a lot of you know the history of Russia. Like if I say something by mistake or maybe I was reacting to a video and Putin said something I didn't understand, I get like a lot of correction from a lot of people. They're like, nope, this happened in 1950 and this was this, this was this. So is this a thing in Russia where like an average Russian really understands the history? Or is this guy just like a, a professor or a history student? When the Yuri came to Novgorod by the invitation, his associates, his squads, Askolt Edir, they decided to go to the south of uh, Novgorod and they came to the territory of nowadays Kiev and they started to rule there. Meanwhile, Rurik got a son, Prince Igor. When Rurik died, Prince Igor got the authority, but he was too small. And in fact, the authority was in the hands of the relative of Rurik, Oleg, Oleg the Wise. He got an authority of Russia on the rights of regions of a young Prince Igor while he is young. And one of the things that he did, he came to Kyiv and he kicked off Askolt and Dir from there because he said that you are not authorized to be in a power there because you are not the uh, inherent of Rurik that's who is a legal ruler, Prince Igor. And that is how, almost from the very beginning, Russia started to be developed in two centers. A one center, the main center here in Novgorod. Novgorod known as the father of Russian cities and in Kiev. But while in Novgorod, in Novgorod, you see everything was developed, you know, in a kind of democratic way, like it was the Republic. In Kyiv, there was more autocratic monarchy, mm. way of like power. And on the upper part, there is a cross, Christian cross, which has symbolized that Russia turns into the Christianity almost at the very beginning of its way in 988. And here, all around the monuments, the figures of 128 most significant persons for all the history of Russia. This is Rurik, the man with the cross, Prince Vladimir, Vladimir the Baptist. Did they have his picture? How did they figure his face out? Is, is there a picture of Yurik? If he's so sure, because he said like, this is Yurik, not an image or a statue of Yurik. He said, this is him. So it means he's so sure that this is him. Here you can find the figures of Peter the Great, Catherine the Second, Yaroslav the Wise, the most significant saints of Russia. <laughs> the poet Alexander Pushkin, the scientist 
Михаил Ломоносов. This is incredible artwork with so much detail and I'm even more proud that the person behind the video knows all of this. Like I, I just, I'm overwhelmed by, <laughs> by how much he knows. Minion and Pajarsky, Prince Alexander Nevsky. Yeah, such an interesting monument, which is, tells a lot. Yeah, the whole about story. About the first thousand years of the history of Russia. Wow. The oldest Orthodox Christian church in Russia. St. Sophia Cathedral in Novgorod. I wish he can get in, so As we can I see. Said, it was built in 1045-1050. Oh, you can get it. Wow. Kremlin means fortress, but while every Kremlin is a fortress, not every fortress is a Kremlin. Is a Kremlin. <laughs> Kremlins are having such a typical ancient old Russian architecture. In fact, Kremlins were the towns because the towns were inside of the Kremlins. Most of old Russian towns, at least significant Russian towns, were founded on the banks of the rivers and preferably on a high hills. It was very practical because back in those days, the waterways, the rivers, the seas were the main transportation arterias. Uh, and uh, all the trades and all the main transportation went through the rivers another another reason i saw in a video because we had seen a video prior on how russia became so big that explained that russia the cities the builds the cities next to natural barriers like rivers mountains valleys and that also was used to stop invasion into their territory that's why they did that it was used as a natural like barrier to avoid invasion I just thought I should mention that because, you know, I know some things. For <laughs> the seas. At the same time, back in those days, it was pretty important to be able to resist the invasions. I just said that. And look, really, try to climb at first on this hill and then on that tall wall while there is such a little windows from where being relatively safe the archers while striking you come on try this not going to be easy mm -hmm. we saw the philharmonic hall on the territory of kremlin named after sir yerachmanov and here in the park around the uh, Novgorod Kremlin, the monument to Sergei Rachmaninov, one of the greatest Russian composers ever. If you still don't know Sergei Rachmaninov, then I recommend you to begin learning his music with piano concerto number no. two, at least piano concerto number no. two. Here all the time sounds his music through the...
can someone write the English translation? Because I thought I would understand how to write the name, but I, I don't understand it. Can someone write the English translation of his name? I would like to go listen because he's saying he's one of the biggest musicians or artists Russia's had. So yeah, I'd like to at least witness that. The speakers, his most significant classical masterpieces. And now I'm going to drive 200 kilometers west of Veliki Novgorod to Pskov, another ancient Russian town, in order to continue my story, my main story. Mm -hmm. The story about Olga and her grandson Vladimir the Baptist. Come on. The renovation of the whole church ensemble. One of the most ancient churches in Russia. Before we'll get to the highway, also wanna hop onto the monuments of the great prince of Novgorod, Alexander Nevsky. That's where he is. Next well, to the railway the monument. terminal. The great prince of Novgorod, Alexander Nevsky, the saint prince Alexander Nevsky. Honestly, I must say I'm so proud with how Russia documents their history. It's on the streets, they keep it everywhere, so people know these things. Yeah, I wish Nigeria kept this history like that too. So like the younger people would know and the people yet to be born would know these things because the, the monuments will not go anywhere. Um, our generation would go, the next generation would come, they'll still see it and they'll still know the history. But this kind of makes sense why a lot of people in Russia know the history because it's just right next to the um, train station and the other one was in the building, like the oldest church is accessible to people. People still pray in the oldest church. So that, it does make sense actually. And I'm proud of, I'm proud that this is happening. Like I'm excited for Russia. One of the most significant historic figures of the Russian histories. He is the savior of Russia. At least three times he was saving Russia. Two of those episodes, the battle on Neva River with Swedes and the ice battle on Chutskoy Lake with Livonian Order. He was getting stronger and he was saying that stronger is the one on whose side is the truth. If truth is on your side, you are stronger. And same as now, back in those days, 800 years ago, when Alexander Nevsky lives, born in 1221, there were many talks that Russia is about to be done. But Alexander Nevsky was always saying that Russia is still standing and will stay in the thousand years after and everybody's welcome to russia you are welcome if you will come with peace but if you will come to us with a sword you will fall off with a sword. that sword mm -hmm. i have a pretty limited time today but i think i need to find a couple minutes for a quick wash of my really dirty car today. Naturally, I'm gonna wash it, but let's call it more like spring clean. I'm gonna wash it in one of these self car wash cabins. This is my car, Moskvi 3. In fact, a Chinese jack car, which is assembled by the official license in Moscow on Moskvi factory. It's one of the responses to the sanctions on cars, one of the replacements of those Western brands which left Russia. Oh, they sanctioned cars too, in, like, so Western countries don't ship cars to Russia. You see, Russia has adapted very well. This thing would have been like an issue, but you see, they have better... I don't know the quality of these cars, but my point is, they, it's going to be cheaper if it's coming from China. You know, not to discredit the quality, but it's going to be 
priced better than what would be priced in if it came from the Western countries. So yeah, I think they've adapted. Just a basic sprinkling. Just for 200 rubles, which is about two bucks. I've made a quick wash without any foam, chemicals, just a, a sprinkling with a hot water, which is more than enough for now. Because mm -hmm. I need to run, I need to run. 2011 kilometers, three hours and five minutes, non-stop, all the way to Skov. The snow begun. It's not gonna be a fun Tomorrow drive. I know. Welcome to Pskov. Found it in 903. 903. Imagine this is exactly 800 years before the foundation of St. Petersburg. Gosh. The economy of Russia works. Hmm. I want to take this time to commend this guy for this video. This is such a great video, like such a great video, a lot of work. Like I, I know what it feels like driving in the snow for two minutes. <laughs> he drove three hours and still talking with the history, the knowledge of history he has is remarkable. I'll put the link to his channel in the description, guys. I'm sure he has a lot more videos that are very impressive, so go check it out. This one caught my attention because of the Putin Tucker Carlson interview, so I thought it'll be an interesting one to check out with you guys, but please, I'm sure he has a lot more, so go check it out. Trinity Cathedral on the territory of Pskov, Kremlin. That was initially founded by Princess Olga. And this is Olga Bridge. Why I never deep washed my car today. It's dirty Only again. 211 kilometers at this time of the year and you see it's dirty again and now i came to the most significant place in pskov same as novgorod kremlin and most of other russian kremlins pskov kremlin was also founded on the bank of the river even rivers Vilike River, which is now frozen, and there is Pskova River. Pskov Kremlin. The foundation started in 11th century, around Trinity Cathedral. And the place for Trinity Cathedral determines Princess Olga, who lives in Pskov region. He was staying here when she saw the vision how three rays of light were getting in one point there on the other bank of Vilike river what by the way means the great river and that's where she gave an order for the construction of trinity cathedral this is already the fourth version of trinity cathedral four times it was reconstructed the very first one was made of woods and never got to our days the embankments along the kremlin and here is the famous caption russia начинается здесь russia begins here <laughs> Velika river is now frozen Russianist Here the guys are riding the dogs. <laughs> Come on. 
<laughs> never seen this. <laughs> they are on the skis. Yeah, the dogs are pulling them. Slav, Svitoslav Igorevich. Then Prince Igor was killed by the people from Drevlans, the early East Slavic tribe. And that's when and how on the rights of the regions of a young Prince Svitoslav Igorevich, Princess Olga started to rule Russia. And she ruled old Russia for 15 years. From 945 to 960. And in 955 or 957, there's different information about it. She was baptized into Orthodox Christianity in Constantinople. She wanted to bring the uh, Christianity to Russia instead of paganism because she wanted to get a deeper connection with Europe. And there, paganism probably already was considered as outdated. So she's got baptized into Christianity, but her son, Svitoslav, was completely against that. So not only the people met that with the resistance, but the main thing, her son, Prince Svitoslav. And that's why the mass Christianity in Russia back then delayed for 30 years. When uh, to the uh, authority came Prince Vladimir, Vladimir the Baptist, already the son of Svitoslav and the grandson of uh, Olga. Hmm. It's gonna be a lot of history to take in for one day, but I appreciate it. You know, I'm learning, guys. The construction of Pskov Kremlin started in the 11th century and continued until 15th, 16th century. The unique thing about it was that it was consisted of five circles of the walls inside was in fact the most protected Kremlin in old Russia. Hmm. It's like a I like how well preserved these things are. Imagine if you would want to attack it, you would need to go through five circles of the walls. Got inside here you may photograph and film but just with no flashlights. Hmm. The buildings, the churches in Russia are so beautiful. Like since the day I saw the military church, I'm like, yeah, the churches are just incredible. The detail. It's like they spend a lot more money building churches in Russia, like I mean, that may not be true because also the metro is also very beautiful. But you guys spend a lot of money building these things because I can't imagine these details cost a lot of money. It's beautiful. <coughs> Making the donation. Now, the final thing that I want to show you in the historic city center of Pskov, the monument to Princess Olga and her grandson, Prince Vladimir, Vladimir the Baptist, who started the baptism of Russia in 888. This is an artistic depiction of Olga and Vladimir 
Mm -hmm. Or not the real thing, but a depiction. This monument is located on the territory of Children's Park. Imagine that. That's what I was saying. Children's Park. So every child playing around is seeing this. And as a kid, you're going to be curious. and You're going to ask questions. That means you're going to learn. And of course, they are faced onto the Trinity Cathedral in Kremlin. God bless Russia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God bless Nigeria too. Bless every country in the world. Okay, I think that was the end of the video. No? Yeah, I think that's the end. Anyways, let me know what you think about that. I feel like that was a very good video because I sat for 30 minutes. I didn't think I was going to do this again, sitting for 30 minutes to watch a video, but that was incredible. Yeah. And he put so much effort in making that video, which means I better sit for 30 minutes to watch it because a lot of hard work went into making it. And I do appreciate it. Let me know what you think. If there's anything you want to add to the video, correct, critique, you know, share. Feel free to do so in the comment section. And like I've been saying, the link to his channel would be in the description. So please go check him out. Like I do appreciate his work. I don't just want to come, you know, review his work on my channel and don't give any credit. So please go appreciate him too. Anyway, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.